Hello guys, welcome to Easy TV Presence Tech. We have another episode. In this episode, I'll show you guys um, how to install SCCM, which is System Center Configuration Manager, and why we need it, uh, how we can install it, and how we can configure it. Everything I'll show you step by step. And also, I have a nice documents which will, I'll share uh, in the description box of the video. So you can have it. The, uh, it's a complete, complete SCCM setup. Uh, documents. So I'm going to share my screen and I'll show you step by steps. So step by step SSM 2303 install guide. So that means this is the latest version uh, of the SSM. It's called current branch. So the SSM current branch running right now 2303. So the SSM 2303 install guide is a bit lengthy um, because it's itself is a course like five or six month course. So I'll cover this uh, like several topics that are important while installing the SCCM in this step by step. So what is the SCCM? So what is the SCCM? I'm not going to explain it. You can just read it from the documents, but the important thing is history of the SCCM. That's very important to know. What is the what is this history? Like when SCCM start? So the, when the study SSCM is started is in uh, like first time Microsoft released in 1994. And that time SSCM name was system, uh, Systems Management Server, System Management Server, which is called SMS. And 2007, Microsoft renamed SMS to System Center Configuration Manager, which is SCCM. And 2019, Microsoft again changed the name, is renamed with Microsoft Endpoint Configuration Manager, which is MECM. So uh, the current SCCM name is MECM actually, but um, people still now knows it as a SCCM. But the new name is MECM, that's it. So Configuration Manager current branch, so three update per year. So whenever Microsoft released uh, any new version of uh, SSCM current branch, and on that on that release on that release Microsoft on that version Microsoft released another three updates for that version. So and when they release it, so they release a, like every year February, June, and October. So total three updates they release for, for version. So, <clears throat> and also whenever you install, whenever you install, um, like whenever you, so for example, um, I'm just giving an example. So 22, 23 is out of date. Okay. I can read this one. So, for example, the System Center Configuration Manager SSCM current branch version 2203 was released in April 20, 2022. So April 2022, which version is released? 2203 version, right? The version is currently in the security and critical updates servicing patches. Microsoft provides security and critical update for these versions for, for four months four months through July 2022. After that, this version only received security updates for the remaining 14 months. So four months is provide security patch and critical update, right? Security and critical update. But after four months, it will only provide security updates. That means remaining 14 months, you're going to get only the security update, no critical updates. So that means Microsoft provide total 18 months updates, right? Through September, 2023. So that means on September, 2023, so based on the release current branch of 2003 is out of date. And it's mean that in October, 2023, you need to upgrade to a new version. That means if you install 2022, it's released on April 2022, right? So this version is released on April 2022. It doesn't matter. You install that version in June or July or August. 
So when it's released, after that count 18 months, and after 18 months, that version will be end of life. So for example, another one, the version we are going to install here, which is 2303. So that one is released, uh, 2003 is released on, I think, 20, uh, 2023, April. So that version will be expired on 2024, October. So if you install in April, whenever it's released, then you can have 18 months. But if you install it uh, 2024, that means you don't have that much time. You have to update it up by October 2024. So that means when there are any product Microsoft released, any version of SCCM Microsoft released, after that you have to count 18 months. So up to 18 months, th that version is good. After that, it will be end of, out of date. So out of date means end of service. So you have to upgrade, upgrade to the latest version or new version. So now I'll discuss about the SSM architecture. So SSM architecture uh, is pretty important. Like I'm going to explain it like not in a broad way, like just I will give you high level overview of SSM architecture. So basically what you need to implement an SSC. If your organization is a small organization, in that case, one SSM server is enough. One SSM server is enough, which is called primary site, which is called SSM primary site server. This server is enough for running in one organization. But for redundancy, load balancing, you can have a multiple, maybe you can have another secondary site, you can have another one, you can have another one, or if you have like two data center or you have a remote location or remote office in different state or different location, in that case, you can have another primary site. So whenever you have a like two primary site with some secondary site, in that case, or just two primary site, in that case, of course, you have to implement a central administration site. It's extra server. Why you need to build this one? Because this central administration gonna be maintain your both primary side or your all primary and secondary side. So that's why it's mandatory. But if you have only one primary side, in that case, you don't need all those things. Now we need to know actually what's the capacity of one primary server. So one primary server can manage 175K devices or computers. That means one primary side can handle, it's the capacity of a one primary side, 175,000 computers. So that's enough. The only thing, one, what do you need extra? You need a database. So it is highly recommended to use the external database, not in not like internal with the your primary side server. So for the database, you need a SQL server. So you should have a SQL server a standalone database, or maybe if you have it, a SQL server always on, so you can use that always on environment for this for this uh, SSCM database. So that means what? You just need two server. For minimum configuration, you need two server. One is primary side site server for SSM and one database. But if you have a database server already built, in that case, you don't need database because you have already, right? So just only one server is enough for SSM. One server is enough for SSM. And this is the central admission site. That means it's one. if you have one central admission site, then what should be the capacity? What do you need? So I already explained SQL server and also the secondary site, primary site, central administration, right? But what is the capacity of a one central admission? If you have a two primary side or two secondary or three secondary or four secondary, whatever. You must need to have a central admission. When you need a central admission, if you have more than one primary side, there is no doubt you need a central administration. That's it. And what is the capacity of your central administration? So the central administration, if you have a central administration, then how many device you can manage? You can manage 825,000 computers or devices, 825,000. 
if you have a central administration site. And also, one central administration site can manage how many primary sites or child. So it can support up to 25 child primary site. Child primary site means one, two, three, four, five, six, like total 25. One central administration can manage. So that's it. I'm not going to spend any more time for this. Just go for the next options. Configuration manager major feature. So it, it has some major feature or like um, options or features. Information collection, queries and reports, deployment, endpoint protection, compliance baseline and remote control. So what does it mean? Just Google it and you can learn it. I don't want to spend time for this. I'm going to describe actually step by step how you're going to set it up, right? What is what is the requirement? So dedicated SSM server, which is called you can you can call primary site server. It can be Windows 20, 2019 or 2022, and dedicated SQL server for a system in a different machine, which is called standalone. And also that operating system you can have 2019 or 2022 server. So that means what you need to build to, or if you have already SQL server, then you can skip this option. The second option, if you have already standalone SQL server, or if you have a always on SQL Server always on environment. In that case, you don't need to build new SQL Server for your SSCM. You don't need to. And SQL Server version, any SQL Server version 2016, 2017, 2019, or 2022, you can install on top of your Windows operating system. So that means what do you need? You need a virtual machine. Windows virtual machine, definitely it should have more CPU and more memories. So uh, like 16 CPU with 32 gigabyte of memory for your SSCM and also same thing I recommend for SQL Server 16 CPU with 32 gigabyte of memory and in future whenever you can see that it's too much load on your database or your SSCM server then you can increase it and Active Directory definitely you should have or you will have on your environment and also you need at least one uh, Windows client machine, it can be Windows 10 or 11, or you can have if two Windows 10 or one Windows 10, one Windows 11, that will be great. So, uh, the reason you need to have this just to test after you implement it, how you're going to test it. That's why. And then create a two service account one SSCM admin, another is SQL admin. So, SSCM admin, like you know how to create a service account, right? So, I have, I can show you here. This is my active directory. So in Active Directory, if you go to the user and computer, then you can have, a, in my case, I have a group here. You see here, I have a group. So under the IT service, service account. So I created SSM admin. How I created SSM is it's pretty simple. Any one of the, my users, I just right click on it. I said, okay, copy or maybe right click here. Just create a new and users and then type the user's name and whatever the, 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 and, uh, whatever the username is. So if it's SSM admin, SSM admin, then click next and then provide the password and make sure password of, it is, since this is the lab, that's why I say password never expire. Or if this is a service account, in that case, uh, you can just say user, user cannot change the password. So that's it. And, and then you have to assign some permissions here. So for the SSCM, you, if you go to the properties, and go to the number of, you see this one is a member of administrator, member of domain admins, member of enterprise admins, member of group policy creator, member of infrastructure. Uh, this is the, some groups added, um, RDP, RDP groups, and also schema admins. This is very important. That one is required. How are you gonna add it? Say for example, a schema admin. How are you gonna add it? Just yes, schema admins. And then you just click OK. I, it, this one is already exist. That's why I'm not going to click OK. I'm going to click cancel. I just showed you how to create it. So make sure you have one service account for SSM. I call it SSM admin. It's not means that you have to have the same name. You can have different name, different user. And also have a service account for SQL, which is called SQL admin. If you look at it, SQL admin is a user. And also SQL admin is a member of administrative group. You can check that. It should have administrative privilege access. 
if you go to the member of you're going to see some it's going to dominate bin. if it's not a dominant bin, it doesn't matter but you have to have some rdp groups because uh, the user should have rdp privilege access so how i create rdp privilege access i just created another groups here if you look at here i have a groups uh, the group and i have a group group name is rdp rdp admin group so that group i added um SCCM and SQL Server, SQL Admin both together. I, I added here. If you go to the properties, you're going to see member of SQL Admin and SQL Service Account, and which is SQL Admin and SCCM Admin is a member of RDP Admin group, right? So now what I did, I have added, I have created a GPU policy. So how I create a GPU policy here? This is a simple way. I just created a GPU policy, right click on it. Click new, new, and then say something, whatever you want, and then go to the edit option. Say, for example, this one, right? So this one is already created. Um, local admin access, local admin access for group users. So how are you gonna create it? Right click on it. I'm just showing it with another one. Right click on it, new say local i'll delete it i will delete it later because i have already created local admin nothing else so actually my actual one is local admin access for group users this is the actual gpu so i'm just showing you like this you're going to create this and right click on it right now there is no no there is see the computer configuration is no settings no settings so how are you going to create the settings edit and then under computer configuration policy um, window settings, I can I can maximize it to have like better view. Okay, security, and then uh, restricted group. You see restricted group. Right click on it, add a group, browse, and then search our group right, which is uh, RDP admin group right search it rdp admin okay actually admin group okay rdp admin okay and then click okay when you click okay immediately you're gonna see the another window so make this rdp group is a member of is a member of not this one members of this group no this this one this is this group is a member of what administrator again go browse say administrator administrator s administrators check and click ok and click ok and apply and ok that's it so now it's done it's done right so close the editor close the editor now if you refresh this policy you're gonna see you gonna see exact. You gonna see here. Now this one has a window settings, secret settings, restricted group, RDP group. So that means now if I link this GPU with any one of my computer, and that one will create a local admin group. So I, let's let me show you what actually it gonna create. So I'm going to delete this one because since I have already another one created, I am going to delete it, and I'll show you here this one. This one I have created same thing that's exactly same you see here restricted group rdp admin group and then it's a member of administrators right so this one i need to now link it how are you going to link it right click on it on the computer object because i know my all computers my all computers is under computer object if you go to the computer object you're going to see the server or maybe workstation everything everything under this one right so any one of those you see So look at here, if you look at here, so whatever the server I have, if I look, if I link a GPU here, it, this is going to be applied with all the OUs or servers, objects, right? Any objects is there, is going to, the GPU will be applied. 
So I'm going to link it with where under the computer object. How are you going to link it? Right click, link GPU, and then you're going to look for local admin, group policy, and click OK. But I have already linked it here, and it's already applied to my machine. So let me check how it's in, like create an impact on the server. So if you go to the servers, I didn't create manually. Go to the, on the server, go to the computer management. Just type computer, then it's going to show you a computer management. Click here, and then it will open a window. And from the window, you expand the local users and groups, groups, and then administrators, double click on it. And you're going to see here RDP admin group. So this group is assigned to the GPU policy. So I, if I have a now, now I think, think about I have now 10 machine, right? 10 object, 10 computer objects. So later on, if I have 50 computer objects, I don't need to create uh, manually. I don't need to go each and every machines and create it because it's going to be created by GPU policy. Whenever you add any machine with the domain by default, automatically this user group will be added to the, as a local administrator. So, that's how our SCCM admin and uh, SQL Server admin has a privileged access as a local admin. So to do the RDP on both server, right? But uh, SQL Server and SSM server, which is very important. All right, so do, I think you guys already understand this and group policy, which one I already explained here, step by step, I already did these steps, right? So we already assigned this. Right, so now three major roles. Actually, I'm not going with these major roles. Just go for the step number two. SSM 2303 prerequisite checklist. So you can uh, for site and uh, site system prerequisites configuration manager read this article. So there is some information about to read the articles. And step number three is creating the system management container. So this is like this is the main thing we are going to start here. So number two, you can skip, or if you want, if you have time, you can just research and check the prerequisite for this. Um, create the system management container. Okay, how to create a management? So creating the system management container. System management container, this is a prerequisite. If you read the number two options, right? So we are going to create that, um, system management container, which is add ESI, then connect, and then you have to connect by default this. So select the class as a container and click next. I have like a step-by-step -step each and every ones, and then I'll name it as a system management. So let's go and start it and come here. So this is our SSM server, and this is our Active Directory, right? So this one is our Active Directory server. So on the Active Directory server, I'm going to close everything like this. So make sure, no, no, sorry, not here. ADSI, your ADSI, 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 just type ADSI, then you can go ADSI editor. And if this is not prompt here, you can go start button and then control, control panel and category small, and then administrative tools administrative tools and then you're going to see all the administrative tools shortcut here adsa is there right everything you can get it from there if something not pop up with the search you can go like this way anyway so we already got it uh oh sorry i close it adsi right so adsi edit click here then it will open an window so right now here is nothing right so right click and then connect when you see click click connect is going to connect you see a default naming context and select it you don't need to do anything if you want you can just have some name here it doesn't matter and under the under system you see whenever you click here it's not showing anything, right? When you so you have to you have to expand it. You have to expand it, then it's gonna show you some more options. So on the system, I'm going to expand it actually a little bit bigger. So you can okay. 
So right click on the system and then object and then you see container object and then container click next and the value so just type the name system management click next and then finish so it's created here if you can just refresh it system is created here system management you see system management is created or if you look at here it's going to show you here too system management right it's already created all right see this is the time all right so this option is done now grant the SSM server permissions on the system management container. Now you have, so grant SSM server permissions on the system server management container. Okay, what is the SSM server name? Now this is the options. So now the, now what are you gonna do? This part is done. So you can just close it. This part is done. Now you have to go to Active Directory, Users and Computers, and make sure, make sure when you select this one, make sure on the from the view, Advanced Feature is selected. It has a check mark. If it is not, then check mark it, then and after that, refresh it. And expand the, expand the yellows.com or your domain. And then <clears throat> you're gonna see here, System. So click assist, uh, System, and then after that, you're gonna see here, um, System management. So the container you created, this one is here, right? So now you have to delegate um, SSM primary site server. You have to provide the delegate permissions as an administrator. So let me do that, how we can do that, right? So system management, right click on it, and then say delegate control, click next, add. And now we're gonna add the computer object. So which one is the computer object? Our system server. This is the system server, right? So you can type it. I'm not going to type. I just copy and then paste it here. But it's not going to search because on the top is selected as a user group or building uh, security principles. But you have to click on objects and then select the computers and then select check name. So I got it. Click OK. Next. Now click create a custom task for delegate and then click next and check mark on full permissions full control and click next and finish so we have provided the full permissions on this container what if what we provide like we provided the computer object of this one right uh, sscm primary site server we provided a <coughs> delegate control administrative privilege access on this container. So this is done. Now step number five, extending Active Directory schema, extending Active Directory schema. So you have to extend it. So how are you going to extend this one? Okay, so now we need the assistive software. We need the system software. Let me show you actually how you can download the system software. So if you don't have the system software, I'm going to actually search on here. Let go, let's go to here, SSM. So download the system software, which is current branch, right? SSM current branch. Okay, so SCCM. Okay, just give me one second. Uh, I have some internet issue here. The SSM current branch. If you search support for SSM current branch, or, or you can say, okay, you can say SSM current branch. 
download. So it will take you here, Microsoft Configuration Manager, Crown Branch. So click here. Okay. So if you could done now, this is, you see here, please select your Configuration Manager, Crown Branch download. So this is the version 2303. So this is the evolution version I'm, I'm downloading right now. I don't have any license key, so I can use it for 180 days. All Microsoft product, they provide you 180 days free version of free, but you can use the, um, the whole software, whole application. But after 180 days, you have to have a license. So just simply click download and you see here, it's gonna be start downloading three minutes or it's 1.2 gigabyte. And so I'm gonna do the same thing on, because I need the same version here, my Active Directory folder, I need it. That's why I'm going to download here too. So same thing I will go, I will do here. I just copied the whole thing. So easily I can go there and then just download. Okay, it's already started downloading. So I need in both place. This one is four minutes left and I'll put it here. So on on the system server, on the system primary site server, actually I need a um, lot of things. So go to the um, this PC and then you can see I have two drive. Make sure when you create a virtual machine, you will have a two drive. And this drive I have 300 gigabyte and CDEV is only 100 gigabyte. So you can create a folder for, you can say SSCM, current branch, current branch uh, software. So I'm going to exa copy exactly whatever the name is. And version is 2303, right? So I'm gonna to write the exactly same thing. Just to organize everything, right? You can say software, Hyphen and then the branch name, current branch 2303, that's it. So after it's done, right now it's coming to download folder. I'll move from here to this folder. So this one also two minutes left. And this one is, also almost done. All right, so download is completed on the download folder in my attribute So I did both side download, it's up to you. You can download or you can just copy from one one to uh, one server to another server, or maybe in a shared location, you can share it to both, both server. It's up to you how you can do that. But I downloaded both places because it take me about only four minutes. So after it's download, you have to double click on it and it has its own self extracting um process so when you double click on it it will give you the this window and this window will take time sometimes uh, like uh 40 seconds or one minute or more than one minute so you have to wait so double click on it then you're gonna get this one again it will take time to open this window and then now um so for for the ssm server i already moved the from download to the folder from download, I move this software to the, my specific folder on E drive. So now I'm extracting, extract. It's going to be extract. The same thing I'm going to do here, extract. And extracting will take a little bit of time. You have to wait until it's finished. You see it's created another folder, cd.retail.ln. So it's almost done, Not it's not gonna take that long. So this one is done and also this one is almost done. Okay, all right, it's done already. So we, we learned how to download 
then how to extract it, right? So right now I don't have anything to do on my SSM server. I have to go to my domain controller because what I need to do right now, I'm going to extending Active Directory schema. So for extending Active Directory schema, the system is you have to have the SSM software on your Active Directory. You can copy this one only or maybe whole thing or you download the directly here or maybe copy from somewhere. It, it doesn't matter, it's up to you. So where do you have to go? Go to the folder inside and then SSM setup and then bin x64 and then if you look at this one bin x64 then extadsch exta so we need to search for this one e press e from exta this one you need this one exactly see here you need this one right so copy the path and then open your okay command form so i'll show you actually what you're gonna do so you we found we found the application file here right under x64 so what are you gonna do right now just So what are you gonna do right now? Select this one, right? And then press the shift key from your keyboard, hold it, hold it, shift key, hold the shift key and then right, right click on it. And then you're gonna see copy as path, just copy. And then now open CMD. And then right click the command prompt, run. And then right click and then it's gonna be give you the whole link and hit enter okay so successfully extended the active directory schema that's it that's confirmed that you successfully extended the active directory schema so this is the process another process just open the cmd right click run as administrator maybe this, maybe this one can work or maybe not i'm just going to show you extract so drag and drop here Yes, that's also work. Hit enter. Okay. So drag and drop. Successfully extended the activity schema. That's it. So both way you can do. So I'm going to close this one. I don't need this one anymore right now. And what's next? Next step number six is install web server IIS prerequisites. So web server IIS, you have to install all dotnet framework iis and everything on your ssm server which is your primary site server so what, how are you going to install it you have to go to the server manager my server manager is already open if it's not open you can open from here right so my server manager is already open and what are you going to do from the dashboard click add roles and features click next click next click next and then click next from the feature make sure you select this all, make sure you select all this and also expand it and select all this. And background intelligent transfer service BITS, make sure you select this one BITS. IS server extension. And then nothing else here. Oh, sorry, another thing is in here is remote, 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 remote. Something is missing okay remote differential compression make sure you install this one remote differential compression so i have already installed here because the service instruction will take a little bit of time that's why i just saved the time and but i'm showing you how you're going to do that the exactly same thing nothing else so when you click next then it's going to show you on the next page is this one iis so on the iis you're going to select all this field all this field all this so I have already mentioned everything here on the documents, sp.net, security on the, this one, and IS manager, this, all those. And then install it, click next and then install. Then you're gonna see this is, is okay. Okay, so I don't think I'm gonna, I want to show you one thing. Like whenever you select all, all those things, make sure you have attached Windows 
uh, Windows CD, Windows ISO file here. See my Windows ISO file is here. How you can add it here? If you go to like your V center and then add add on the virtual CD ROM, like for example here. So my vision is open actually, but long time it's open. That's why it's a little bit slow. Okay, so this is my Active Directory, right? So uh, sorry, this is my B center and this is my SSM server. Right click on it. If the, if your uh, like uh, Windows ISO file is not attached, then you can go edit option and go to the virtual CD ROM. You see data store ISO file. Select a browse and go to the data store ISO file and then go to the browse option and where use where you upload your data store. So in my case, I have the ISO file here, all ISO file I uploaded to this data store. And from there, you can just select. So in my case, I have Windows 2022, this one. So I just select this and click OK. And it's gonna show you here. And after that, if you go to the Inside of this machine, you're going to see a drive here. So what do you need to do? Say, for example, I'm doing something extra. I'm not actually doing, but I'm going to do it. Show it just for show, showing. Click Next. And then you see here, after Next, you're going to see two options here. Specify and Alternative Source Path. Make sure you select this one. So Alternative Source Path, what are you going to do? Copy this path. Open, open, open your CD. And then go to the this is this is actually CD virtual CD ROM, right? The I Windows ISO file. So go to the source file, sources, and then SXS, and then just copy this path, copy, and then close it and paste the path here. That's it, nothing else. And click OK. So it's gonna be installed automatically. I'm going to cancel it because I have already installed. That's why I'm not installing. And after installation is done. Then it's going to show you, okay, install successfully completed, right? And then now install Windows WADK and WINPE. So how are you going to download it? So first uh, first of all, you do download Windows ADK. And I have the link here. So if you just click control button and then press control button on from your keyboard, hold the control button and click here, it will take you to the link here right so actually i'm not download on my laptop so i'm going to co copy the link and in going inside of my ssm server this is my ssm server okay got it and paste it so i got the download link so download and install the windows adk it's windows adk right so i'm just copy the link and just organizing where I'm gonna put this file. So I'm gonna put this file on here. Just edit it. And let's see. So Windows edit If you go down a little bit. You're going to see here, download the Windows ADK, this. Click here, it's going to start download and then download the Windows PE add-on, which is the second one, right? Click here, it's going to be download. So I can download both of them. Let me copy the whole thing if I can copy. Okay, ADK. Okay, copy this one. Just to have like a exactly same okay 
okay so this one is i can just click down click here automatically it's going to be start download and now i'm going to download this one right so, but before i do this one I'm going to copy, okay, copy the, the whole thing. Or you can say, okay, okay. So just click here, it's gonna start download. Okay, download is done. It's, it's a very small file, so it's gonna be download very quickly within a second or less than a second. Okay, so I have completed the download and also I'm going to, create the folder for the file, right? So I can name it all uh, um, all of my software, right? All of my software. Okay, let's, uh, let's put all of them in this folder. I'm just organizing, nothing else. If you don't do that, no issues. Okay, now I have the download files on my download folder, right? So I'm going to open another window. This is my download folder, right? This is my download folder. So first I download this one, right? Okay. So this one, I'm, I need to move it to here, ADK. And then this one is second one, which I download as a PE add-on. So if you go inside here, you're going to see this. And if you go inside here, you're going to see this, right? And you can delete it from there. Don't make you like confused. Okay. So I have downloaded. Now we need to install it. So when you're going to install it, it's going to, you see here, it's going to look for a location where you're going to actually download. So we can, I will create a folder inside the E drive. And only I need to have deployment tools, user to migration and Windows performance toolkit. And nothing else. These three options just you need. Okay, so let's get started to install start installing this ADK. So go to the base folder, right click on it, run as administrator. Yes, and I'm going to minimize this window. Okay, so now it's looking for downloading to directly where? To my C drive, but I'm not wants to, I don't want to C drive, I want on my, um, my E drive, my where? E drive, in this drive, E drive. So how you can do that? Either you can do the browse, Going to minimize this window so either you can do the browse and show the location or what you can do here instead of c just type e and then i don't want actually program files so i'm just removing this one so windows kids 10 that's it and then see you can also download it on the separate computer also, but I'm not going to do that because I'm going to install everything on my uh, primary site server. Click next. Allow Microsoft to connect to this inside of the Windows keys. Okay. Yes, click next. Accept. And now by default is selected a lot of stuff here. Deployment tools, configuration designer, site migration tools, uh, Windows uh, performance toolkit, Microsoft user experience, and uh, supply chain trust. You don't need all those things. Um, so what do you need? Deployment tools, migration tools, and performance toolkit. Okay, these three actually you do you need only, and then say install. So it's gonna take a little bit time to complete this. 
And in the meantime, okay, so now it's gonna take time. In the meantime, what we can do, uh, I can show you actually how you can prepare your SQL server. So on the SQL server, you need a, you need the SQL server software. So you can copy the SQL server ISO file or whatever you want, whatever the version you want. So I, I'm going to install uh, SQL Server 2019 and my Windows is 2022 and my SQL version is 2020, uh, 2020, 2019. So you have to have a 2019 um, ISO file here or, or you can attach the ISO file on a virtual CD-ROM. So how? Same way here. This is your SQL Server, right? Right click on it and go to edit option. If you have uploaded, if you have already uploaded to a data store, then you can attach it to like this ISO file, data store ISO, and then browse. I have here, so I can, I, I install ISO I, under ISO folder. I have the SQL Server. You see the SQL Server, I just select this one and then click OK. That's how I have it here. So that's how I have it here. So if I go now, go to the server inside and click the file explorer and this PC, see I have a C drive, I have a D drive. I can have more drive before SQL server. Definitely for standard installation, you should have multiple drive because uh, the MDF file, LDF file, log file, uh, TEMDB and also for backup, different, different drive, but I'm not going that complex design. So just only if you can go with only one extra drive, which is E drive. And this is my software. If you can right click on it and you can say open, it's gonna open like this. Or if you have ISO file, just right click on the ISO file and then say mount, then it's gonna open also like this. When you click mount, it's gonna open as a virtual CD-ROM, the same as like this. And right click, say run as setup and yes. So we are going to install the SQL server. It's gonna take a little bit of time. It will open another window. So I'm going to minimize this one. And now seems like nothing happened, but actually on the background, it's working. It's gonna open, see here, it's coming up. In the meantime, let's see what's the progress of the other one. So this one is almost 94% completed. Okay. So the SQL Server installation, I'll, I'll show you side by side. Don't be a sidetrack because I just want to save the time for this video. Okay, this one is done. So what are you gonna do now next is the second one, right? Next is the second one, which one we uh, downloaded here, right? software and then p add on right add on this one so right click on it run as administrator yes and you can close it you don't need it actually so same thing i want to put in the same location click next yes accept and by default it has only one option so by default is selected just click install and then it's going to take time again in the meantime, we can do for, uh, we can work with our SQL Server installation. <clears throat> okay, all right. So, and also I have a SQL Server installation separate video in my channel. If you want, if you want to know like uh, in depth, I have SQL Server standalone installation video separately. And also I have a SQL Server always on environment video. So whatever you want, you can watch it. So installation. Then new SQL Server standalone. And I don't need this window, but I need it later on for this one. So I can minimize it or I can open it later on. Okay, so specify a free edition and or and a product kit. I don't have product key. I have, I'm gonna do it for L, um, evaluation because it's gonna give me 180 days. That's enough for me, click next and accept it, definitely have to accept it, next. Show details, let's pass everything, click next. Next. 
So in the meantime, let me check S1 progress. So it's gonna take time, still is working. So hopefully we'll be able to complete the SQL installation. All right, so now is going to give give me another window. All right. So in this window, what do you need to check mark on it? So we are going to install only the database engine service database engine service and nothing else or oh, and also full text analysis service you don't need and so for the this is this is the instance feature instance features only we select two options database engine service and full text syntax that's it and one more thing, shared features. What is the shared feature? Shared features is uh, only one time you need to install. Later on, if you have any more SQL, SQL server, like you want to any more, like more SQL instance, you don't need to install again and again. So I explain it on my SQL server standalone video in depth. So in here, just I'm showing you what I need. So client tools, connectivity, um, Indication service, no, no need, client tools, maybe this. That's it, nothing else. And everything, whatever I want, I'm just going to send it to my E drive. Everything I'm going to install, E drive, not C drive, E drive. So I just change the drive letter to E, drive letter to E, that's it. Click next. Okay, so naming instance, I'm going for naming instance and uh, sorry, default instance. Naming instance means you're gonna provide the name, but I'm not going with the naming instance, I'm going for uh, going with the default instance. By default, just click next. All right. So now, SQL Server Agent. You have to click here and then browse and assign the SQL Server service account, which is SQLADMIN, SQL Admin. Check mark on it. Okay, click OK. Click OK. And then same thing here browse SQLADMIN, which is my service account and click OK, click OK, and then the password of the service account. And the password of the service account. And make sure this one manual, but make it automatic. And then full text, you cannot change anything. And on the SQL Server browser, you can change it. So change it to, it was disabled, but just do it uh, autom automatic, that's it. And, and one more thing, collision. Make sure your collision is, sorry, collision is SQL underscore legend one underscore general underscore CP1 CIAS. So by default is, this one is selected. So click next. And Windows authentication mode. So it is recommended for uh, or like um, if you have a standalone database server just dedicated for your SCM. In that case, it is recommended go for 
don't go for the max mode, go for the Windows authentication mode. So the add current user, which is my SSCM, and then add the SQL Server as uh, SQL admin, right? SC uh, SQL, SQL admin, SQLADMIN, SQL admin. Okay, and also add the SQL admin group. If you search here, then it will show you this group, right? The reason I'm adding group because in future, if you want any other system admin, if you want to give them permissions to access the uh, SQL server instance or like browser SQL server instance in that case, you need, you have to assign them individually inside the SQL server. So instead of doing individually inside of the SQL server, if you can add those users to this group, that's more easier. That's why I'm adding a group. So in future, it's gonna help me. You can add any kind of group. I just name it SQL admin group. It not means that you have to have a, this name. It's up to you. Click next, oh, sorry. Before I do the next, I have to do something else. Oh, I forget it. Actually, I'm not gonna do anything. I just want to show you, explain it. Okay, so on the, you see the end of the tab, data uh, directories. If you have a multiple drive, in that case, you can maybe move the data directory to E drive and use the data directory to the other drive, use the log directory to another drive, backup to the other drive. If you have then temp DB, you can move it to other drive. It's up to you, right? It's up to you. So I'm not doing anything like that. I Everything I'm going to put it on the E drive. Click next. And next install, click install and it's gonna be start installing. So now let's see what the status of our this one. So this one is done, right? Close. So we install, we install, what we install? Windows WIDK and WinPE, both we already installed. So it's completed. Now SQL Server, so the one we already started, SQL Server 2019, right? So already started and I have step-by-step -step options. How to install it. So everything I have screenshot and after installation of SQL Server, you have to install the SQL Server Management Studio to access the SQL Server. Okay, so let's go to the SQL Server box. This is SQL Server is installing. In the meantime, what I can do, I can just open this window. And I said like, I, I'm going to minimize it on the beginning. Why? Because I need it again for this one. Install SQL Server Manage Management Tools. So SQL Server Management Tools, which is SCCM, sorry, um, uh, which is this one, install SQL Server Management Studio, Management Studio, SSMS, Management Studio. So SQL Server Management Studio is not built in with the 2016. So it was built in on 20, um, 20, 12 or 2, 2014, but after 2014, with, uh, uh, from 2016, 2017, 2019, it's not a building, you have to download separately. So you have to click here, then it will take you to the Microsoft website. And from there you can download. But I'm not going to do that. Because this is Microsoft um, Edge browser. Actually, I'm going to close it, I don't know. Okay, so you see a download SQL Server Management Studio SSMS. So I just need this link. I don't like to download through the Edge or Internet Explorer. So what I'm gonna, I just copied the whole link. Now I have the link. I'm going to Google Chrome. 
and I'm, I'm going to paste here, click enter. So I have the link here. I need to download, you see, download a skill server management studio as SMS 20. So just click here and it's going to start downloading. 53 seconds, so its total is 485 megabyte. So the instruction is, is going on. In the meantime, uh, I'm downloading the software, which is going to be completed within short time, SSMS. So what I can do, uh, let me, let me have this one. Oh, sorry. I don't need this one. Okay, so I'm just trying to add the name. Okay, SQL Server Management Studio, this one, copy. And on the folder here, because I'm going to organize everything, right? So since I'm organizing everything on the my E drive, Copy and then right click on it, click new folder and paste it here. Okay, so this one is already downloaded to where my download folder, right? So just so I open another window to look at my download folder. Okay, SSMS is installed, uh, downloaded. So I'm just going to move the SSMS to where SSMS this one. From the download folder to my dedicated folder on e drive okay it's moved so now on the download i don't need it i'm going to delete it because it's going to be confused me okay so i have here i can start so this after this one is done then i'll start installation of you sql server management studio And then after that, I will start install, uh, install WSS role. Okay. So since, since this one is running on my SQL server machine, but my SSM server is now I'm not doing anything. So I can start installing WSS. So make sure a WSS, WSS features you need to install on WSS role actually. WSS roles you need to install on where? Like you can do it on separate individual standalone machine, but it is recommended to have it with um, primary site server. So on the primary site server, we're gonna install these roles. So let's do it because this one will take time in the meantime, because this one is running on our SQL server machine, right? So I'm going to my, uh, I'm, I'm not doing anything here. So just for saving the time, I'm doing I'm doing install. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm going to install the uh, WSUS. So for installing WSUS, you have to go to the server manager where from your SSCM primary site server. From the dashboard, click add and add features and roles. Click next, 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 and then you're gonna see the. I don't know why it's taking too long here. It shouldn't be take that long. And uh, in the meantime, check this one. Okay, this one is working fine. So after on this now, this is a SQL box, right? On the SQL box, SQL Server um, instance is installing right now. After it's completing this, and then we're going to install the SQL Server Management Studio. And on from the SSM server, I'm not sure what why it's taking too long. It shouldn't take that long. Okay. Anyway. Okay. So 
in here what I need, I just need Windows Server Update Services, which is WSUS. Just check mark on it. Add feature. Click next. And click next. Click next. Now it's going to be look for WID connectivity or WSS service. So WID is a um, WSS. WID is a WSS uh, in build database, but we don't want to use it. We're going to use SQL Server, right? So I'm going to uncheck this one and check mark SQL Server connectivity. So now if you click next and the next screen, what it's going to show you? Store update uh, and following location. Choose a valid location path for this one. SSM. Okay. So in here, you have to provide a path to um, store the updates. Whenever WSS is going to be downloaded that Microsoft patch, where is going to put it that, those patch? So that's why you have to provide a share path or location. So I'm going to create a folder or path on my, so right now I'm in my primary site server, right? And SSC, WSS is, I'm going to install in this machine. And in here, so what I'm going to do, I'll create a folder, like folder, and I'm going to name it WSS data or backup or something, whatever you want, WSS. You can say data, WSS data, WSS underscore data or something, whatever you want. And so I just copy it, it just copy this location and then just paste it here and click next. DV instance. So now it's asking for your DV instance, SQL Server database. But I, my database instance is not ready yet. So what I'm going to do? My database instance is not ready yet. So let's go to the database. Okay, it's successfully installed. So database is successfully installed, which is good news. Close it. Now we need to install the SQL Server Management Studio because otherwise, without SQL Server Management Studio, we cannot browse the data, browse the run. We cannot, we cannot see, we can't see the actually database without this. So I'm going to install it right now. And it's going to take time. But I don't need to wait here. So install C drive. Yes, let's go to the C drive. It's, it's, it's a different thing. It's a SQL Server Management Studio. It's just giving you options to manage the database, right? So install it, just click install simply. And it's gonna download the files from the internet. Make sure you have your machine has the like internet connections. Loading the package. So it's gonna take a couple of minutes. In the meantime, what we can do just for saving the time, we can, we know already our database name, right? So this is our database name, which is our machine name because we use the default instance. If you install naming instance, in that case, you have to provide machine name machine name then slash the your instance name. But in our case, our machine name is our instance because we use default instance. So dot ELS.com and check. It says successfully connected to the server. Click next and then install, right? So before I install the WSS, check mark on here, click yes if it's required to restart. So it's highly recommended for any kind of add roles or features, you should check mark on here. If it is required or not required, doesn't matter. It's standard, like recommended, and then install. So now it's gonna take time. It's gonna take time. So now it's connect, communicating with the database, but we are not able to see the database because we don't have the management studio, but anyway, uh, WSS is going to install. So from here, I'm installing WSS and that WSS database is creating on this SQL Server box. So after we install this one, we will be able to see actually how it look like. 
So this roles is uh, WSS roles is going to be installed. We have to wait until that. So this is the way you can install. See here, I have all the screenshot and also the folder I have created and the connect the database. And after this, it's gonna show you like this. So after this one is done, then you're gonna see here after this roles is installed, it says successfully completed, and, and then you're gonna see there is a alert sign on the flag there with the alert sign. So click here and you're gonna see here is the post deployment configuration. So click here and then post deployment configuration will be start in the background. And also the database is gonna be look like this. SAS DB. Okay. So one more thing, I don't know is in my documents, I have it. I don't have it here, right? Maybe I have it. Okay. So then we're gonna do this one. And before we do this one, just to save, okay. Before we do this one, I'm going to save the time. I'm going to do this option. Okay, let me see, wait. This one is done. This is almost done. All right, so uh, instruction is done. I can close it. And see here, immediately, it shows the notification here. Click here and then say, launch post installation task. Launch post installation task. So it's working on the background now, you see. So after post instruction is completed, then we're gonna check this one. And also I think I didn't show on my documents, which is really, really important. Okay, yeah, SQL configuration memory, yes. That one also shows here. So after installation of this one, then we're gonna check the database. And also we're gonna do a uh, on the ISS manager, WSS pool, we're gonna do some change. Um, we're gonna do some change. I'll show you exactly what we need to do. So we need to change the QE length. By default is 1000, let's change it to 2000. And then the private memory limit, KB. So it by default, it was this one, but make it four times. So, which is this one, change this number. You see here, I have a screenshot here. So we'll do it right now. And then, still is running. And how about this one? Okay, so SQL Server is complete, uh, the SS, uh, what is called? Uh, SSMS is installed. So what we can do, we can just run, click start button and then SQL Server, you see Server Tools, and then SQL Server Management Studio here. Take a little bit of time. In the meantime, we can check one more thing, which, which is, oh, okay. Actually, I should do SQL Server Configuration Manager. I forget to show you, which is SQL Server Configuration Manager. Make sure after you install the SQL Server, after you install the SQL Server, you should do one thing which is name pipe, but I forget to enable name pipe. So I have to enable it, but let's see. Okay, management studio also open, connect the database. Okay, it has a problem, right? Don't worry about it. If you, you show the this way, then go to the, it's optional or trust the certificate. Okay, it's connected and also database is, can, is created. But I forget to do one more configuration. After, right after the installation, you should come SQL Server Configuration Manager and enable the name pipe. 
make sure you enable the name pi. It's, it's really important. So to enable, or you can go to the properties and you can do from here, drop down and then yes. So either way, right click on it and then you have to restart. So I'm going to check, take a screenshot of it because I forget to take it. Sorry. Okay. Just quickly, I'm going to take this one because this is very important. Right after you install the SQL Server, then you should do it. Okay. So on my documents, I'm going to put it here, uh, where the SQL Server installation. Okay, SQL Server installation is here. All right, that's done. Okay. WSS is done, 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 done. So now we are here. So let's go to here. See, the post installation is also done. Right? So now, what should we do? We, just, we need to go to the, before we go there, um, I want to actually enable this one. But if you enable this one, you see here, any change made will be saved. However, there will not take any effect until the service is stopped and restarted. Click OK. So now you have to go to the server and then you have to restart it. Stop the service, then start the service again. Stopping the service. Okay, stopping is done. Now starting the service. Okay, so this process is done, right? So I'm going to close it. And database is connected, you see? Database is connected. If you can refresh it, or you can refresh the whole thing. It's okay. Tables. It's created a lot of tables. You see here, all these are already created for WSAS. And the database name is by default SUSDB. So I didn't provide any name. It's by default is created. Okay. So what do you need to do here? We have need to go to the IIS. IIS. IIS manager. Click here. and click here. I'm going to expand it. Site application pool, WSS pool. After I install the WSS, you're gonna get it, right? So right click on it and go to the advanced settings. And you see the QE length is 1000, make it 2000. And then go down, private memory limit. So four to calculator. Okay, just this one is different because um four two nine four nine four. Nine six seven nine six seven four two nine four nine six seven times four so seventeen thousand something right so exactly I'm gonna put it this one here seventeen one seven nine eight six eight eight six eight so exactly I put this number here, four times. I click OK. All right, so this part is done.
Maybe I can do it stop and then start again. Just restart it. Okay. This part is also done. Now I need to do one more thing. Oh, here on the SQL Server side. So this is the SQL Server database machine. In this database machine, I need to do two things. I need to do two things. What two things? One thing is I have to go to the computer management and I have to add my primary site server computer object as a local, administ a local administrator privilege access. So from the computer management, go to the groups administrator and here we're supposed to add a user but in but it is requirements you have to add a computer object as a administrative privilege access add so i'm going to add computer object usually you're going to add here a user not a computer object but this is a requirement for a ccm that's what you're adding and what do you have to do you have to go to the computer object and uh, check mark on computers and then check name click ok and apply and ok so one part is done then the second part is on the database instance right click on it go to the properties and make sure your memory management you see here it's a huge something terabyte space by default because microsoft doesn't know what is the size of your database instance like memory what the size you use or what's the capacity you use what capacity you have as a memory so that's why microsoft put it here some terabyte of memory but you have to configure based on your database maybe your your server so our server we have how many go to edit so we have 32 gigabyte of memory and 16 cpu so out of 32 how much you should assign here so based on your your resource so starting should be is recommended so starting should be recommended what you can look at here okay this part is done which i added already right and recommended sql configuration recommended 8 starting from 8 gigabyte and 24 because i have 32 right I have 32 so at least minimum 4 gigabyte or 4 to 6 gigabyte you should leave it so in here we are going to 8 gigabyte living for 24 we are eight, start from minimum is 8 gigabyte maximum is 24 gigabyte memory but we have actually 32 so that means we are leaving 8 gigabyte of memory for windows to use or other application to use So exactly same amount I'm going to put it here. That's why I'm just moving. So in here it's gonna be eight one nine two, and then in here twenty four five seven six twenty four five seven six twenty four five seven six. If you can do the calculation, sorry. Calculator. Twenty-four five seven six five seven six divided by one zero two four. So it's twenty-four gigabyte. Okay. And click OK. That's it. So what we did so far. Okay, so our documents is here, step-by-step -step documents. So installing reporting services is optional. We can install it later on. So next option is, okay, step number 13, configure firewall settings for SSCM. Configure firewall settings. So you have to create a file and print sharing inbound and outbound both. Also, you can have to just for inbound the SSM firewall for all those port and WMI only the inbound, not outbound. 
actually in my note i said both not actually both so file sharing only inbound but so before you install the sscm the firewall has to be configured properly so that you don't face any issues while deploying the client as end. And that file, why are you gonna create that firewall? So that file is gonna be created by GPU policy. And I have it, uh, everything I have in step by step, but I'm going to share with you. So on from your Active Directory, you have to go to the um, Active Directory uh, Group Policy Management. So for the Group Policy Management, you have to go to the Group Policy Object and create a policy. So I have already created a policy here, you can see um ssm file policy for file and printer sharing so how are you going to do that i'm going to show you step by step here but i already created so you just need to right click here new provide a name blah 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 like this right and then right click on it and go to the edit option and go to the software uh, windows administration of windows expanded security and then windows windows dependent firewall with advanced security if you expand it and then expand it inbound so you have to do inbound outbound inbound right click on it you can say new row Okay, so by default program is selected, but we are not going with the pro, uh, program like uh, predefined. And then click the uh, drop down and go down. See file server. I'm oh, no, sorry. Let's see file and okay here this one file and print sharing. Click here. Click next. And all of them by default selected. Click next. And then you can say allow connections and finish. That's it, right? Okay. And then for outbound, outbound the same thing, right click, new row. Refer this file and print sharing. Next next allow by default is block make sure you click allow finish so only for only for file and print sharing you need inbound and outbound that's it and then do the same thing create another gpu for wmi and come here and right click on it click on new rules and go to the pre pre uh, predefined Predefine and then click on WMI. See here WMI and click next. It's selected all of them. Click next. Allow connections. Next. That's it. And then add a and then create another GP policy, or you can add everything together in one policy. It's up to you. You see here. And then if you want separately for the port number, like the one I shows here this port all this port so just copy all this port i'm just copying this port as a same file port and you can name the same thing like as a gpu name and go to the edit option come here the same option inbound role new role and then in here you can say port click next and specified local path tcp tcp is going to be selected and I create all the all the ports which I need to open. Click next. Allow connections next. 
and domain, private, and public. Uh, you can do it for all. Click next and name it. You can say uh, SCCM firewall four. Click finish. It's going to add here all the posts, right? So it's up to you. You can add everything together in one policy, or you can up, you can have a separate policy and close it. So you see, this is the policy just we updated. If you refresh it, you're gonna see a lot of settings here already done. A lot of settings, right? So everything is already done. You see here. All the ports, whatever we assign. So you can do like this. Okay, I'm going to open again the group policy management. All right, so actually I have it already. So I'm going to delete this one. So this is the way I created SSCM firewall policy for file and print sharing, SSCM firewall policy for Windows management instrumentation, which is, which is WMI and SSCM firewall port. So I have created these three. Now I need to link it with on top of my OU. So my top root level OU, computer object OU is this one. So if I can link it here, then all of them gonna be applied, uh, not only here, I should do it here because it's gonna be applied to our domain controller also, because I need to patch my W uh, domain controller also, right? So domain controller in the separate OU. If I put it here, link here, it's gonna be only apply all the sub OUs here, right? All the sub OUs here, right? The GPU gonna be, so all the sub OU has a, just only a client server computer object, but domain controllers is here. See, if I wants to patch my domain controller, uh, definitely I need to have that that uh, GPU so I can separately link it here or maybe what I can do all the way top on the root label I can link here all the GPUs all three GPUs so I, I created these three GPU for the SSM firewall ports right click OK so now it's linked right okay so configuration settings you see here I just explained what how you're gonna do that now it's a download the SSM 2023 baseline media, which we already install, we already extract, right? So now it's time to install the SSM. So let's get started to install the SSM. So so far, what we did, we we have all the prerequisites. Our environment is ready, database is ready. So now we'll be able to install the SSM finally. So WSS installation, how you can install the, w, sorry, not WSS, um, SCCM. So the, the, our SCCM is here, right? We downloaded here, right? Okay, here, see? We have a folder here, okay. Double click here. So splash, right click on it, open. Okay, it's opening. I'm just going to minimize. Okay. So install, click install. Yes. Before you begin. Okay, click next. Install a configuration manager primary site. So this one, select this one. Install a configuration manager central administration. So central administration I don't need because I have only one primary site. If I have both two primary site or more than two, like multiple primary site, in that case, I have to do a go, I have to go with this option. But now I'm going with this option only and nothing else you need to select. And also you can, you can check the instruction here. So click next and uh, install the license, but I don't have the license. So I'm going to do the evaluation edition, which is which will gonna give me 180 days. Click next, 
and then accept, 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 and click next. And now download the required files. Where is it gonna be download all the record files? So download record files, you see the server name, or you can say go, uh, what, what, what does it mean? So basically this is a records prerequisite. So what I can do uh, on the E drive, I'm going to create a folder. I'm going to create a folder on my E drive. Um, I'm going to name it uh, SCCM hyphen prerequisite. Prerequisite. Okay, so the now what I can do, I can just copy the path and paste it here. Click next. You see here now it's downloading the files, all the prerequisite files, and it's going to be saved here. And it got it's total two of 52 files. So it's gonna take time and you have to wait. There is no alternative, you just have to wait. So it's 51 of 52 files, it's almost done. Last one. Now last one downloading. All right, almost done, almost done. So our SQL server is ready. This one is almost ready. So there's a lot of things actually you have to consider, but if you think actually it's too much, and you're gonna forget everything whatever you are doing right now still you are okay you're completely okay because nobody gonna come like uh memorize all of the, all, all those things so i'll share the documents with you so you just need to follow the documents and you'll be able to implement it just go step by step Right, so that's done. Now it shows the language. So English is by default selected and it's installed. Click next. And same thing, client language selection is also English. But if you if you want to do anything else, you can do you can select it. But by default, English is installed. Click next. Now side code. Side code of your um sscm it's up to you what you can uh what are you going to do with the sscm site code so it's required to have a three unique identifier three unique character so you can say anything, whatever you want, VAS or NOIS, whatever you want, or ELS. So 
I can't put it here as because it's my domain name. So I have to, if you go here, it's gonna it, it will suggest you what you should do. Three letters and numbers. Combination of so let's say the enter an unique site code by using a combination of three letters and numbers. So it, its requirement is three letters. Okay. So I can say Virginia Or I can say is is ELS Virginia, right? ELS BA, EVA. So I can say my site name is EVA. It's up to you, up to me what I can do, right? The site code name. So, so basically in here, actually I provided the different name, the site code. It doesn't matter actually. So you can say site name is ELS SCCM primary site. The name is up to you, what whatever the name you want. And you'll go C drive and install the configuration manager console. Definitely you need it. By default, it has a check mark and also keep that check mark. Click next. So make sure. Uh, you can remember what's the site name. So we provided EVA, that means ELS, E for ELS, and BM is Virginia. And join the primary site to an existing hi uh, hierarchy, but we are not doing this. We are installing a primary site, a standalone, right? So install, so the, select the second option, click next. And you have selected installed, okay, that's good. And now, Configure manager primary site require a Microsoft SQL Server database. It's asking for the data Microsoft SQL Server database. So my SQL Server name is this one, right? Copy. So I'm going to change the name, just the machine name. Okay. And by default, so this is my SQL Server machine name, since I have used the default in instance. And this is the database is creating for the SCCM. EVA is my site code. So click next. And it's going to my E drive is the backup. Not backup actually, it's a SQL data file and log file. So it's taking the drive location from my SQL server. Click next. And now it says SM SMS, which is my primary site server. That's fine. Click next. And in here, make sure select this one. Otherwise, if you select HTTPS, then you have to have a certificate service and also you have to assign the certificates to the clients to communicate with the SSM server. So that's why I go for the second option. Click next. And then you see the HTTP by default is selected, whatever it is, click next and click next. Okay, that's fine. Click next. And it select, it shows whatever so far I selected, click next. Now it's looking for prerequisite. So it's gonna be check prerequisite and if it's found something, 
it's going to show me as an alert, but if it show me just an alert, it's fine. So SQL Server native client version. So this one I can, warning, warning, warning. Warning is completely okay. You can go with the warning, that's fine. So I'm going to resolve this problem right now. SQL Server native client version. So all these things we already did. The SQL Server go to this link. Okay. Okay, for native client actually. For the native client, SQL Server native client. So click where? Here. Take you to here. Okay. So for the native client download, basically uh 2012 native client is also work with 2019. So that's why if you just download this one, it's look like it's 2012, but ours version is 2019, but it still is okay. So click here, then it will take you to the download location. And I'm going to copy the link because I have to download it on my SSM server to resolve this issue, right? So right now it's giving me three warning. So I'll resolve one warning. Still, I'm okay if I don't resolve it, but I can resolve it. I'm going to show you how you do that. So, there's the link here. Click enter on the SSM server, right? So, download x64. It's very small one, small. So, it's already downloaded. Download is done, right? So, you can close it. Where is downloaded? It's downloaded to my download folder here. So right click on it, install. What are we going to install it? We're going to install it on our primary site server. Click next, accept, install. Click next and install. Yes. So it's pretty small. And it's finished, done. So I have done this, and then I can say re. Uh, sorry, run check again. Okay. So now it's showing only. Oh, security mode warning. It's a new thing. If you select this, uh, the SQL server name is SQL server. This is the recommended to configure the SQL server to operate only Windows authentication security before you could. Okay, so this is not actually, I already did on the only Windows. So I don't need to count this one. Okay, so everything is looks good. I just say begin install and it's gonna start now. And that one will take um, more than an hour. Sometimes it takes two hours. So I'm leaving here and I'm going to pause the video recording and I'll be back whenever it's done. All right, so exactly one hour, it took only one hour, exactly, but sometimes it takes more than one hour. It depends on your server performance. Also, it depends on your network performance. Uh, so in our case, it took 
only one hour. It took only one hour. So I can close it now. And also I can close this one. Let's see what's left. So we already done with this. Okay. We are done with this. Now, if you want to check the version, what kind of version you have, and you can check it from here. So what kind of version we have? I, if you want to check, what do you install? So you can click start button and then you're gonna see the configuration manager console after you install. So click here. So it's gonna take a little bit of time, like a couple of minutes sometimes to open this um, window, which is conf Microsoft Configuration Manager. Okay, so it's open. And now if you want to see the version of um, SCCM, like what kind of version, okay. Wow. Okay, anyway, click here and then about the configuration manager, click here. And you're gonna see the Microsoft configuration manager version number 2303. Console version is this, side version is this, supported is this. Okay. So which is this one we just checked. Now, post configuration, that means after installation, you, you have to do some other configuration. So SSM Active Directory Discovery. First, you need to do the discovery. First, you need to do the discovery from your Active Directory, right? It's a kind of integration. So, um, SSM Active Directory Discovery. So you can discover the objects from your um, Active Directory. Active Directory forest discovery, check and enable personal discovery, and then, okay. So, from where you can do that? So, now we are doing post configuration. So, administration, and then, Site configure no, so not site. Hierarchy discovery method. Hierarchy configuration, and then discovery method. So from the discovery method, you're gonna see here all the discovery method is disabled, except hardware discovery. So now we're gonna work with this active directory for us discovery. So right click on it, go to the properties, and in here see enable active directory forest discovery. Just check mark on it. And rest of the two box you don't need to check. So automatically create Active Directory site boundary when they are discovered. Automatically create IP address range boundary for IP subnet when they are discovered. So you can have a check mark here and also run every week or every day. It's up to you. It's up to you completely when you want. So you can say every day or something like that. It depends on your organization. So every day means it's gonna be check your active directory. Say for example, you are responsible for SCCM, but you are not responsible for, um, uh, maybe there's a lot other system engineer or system admin who has access on the active directory and they are also separately involved with adding a machine with the domain. So that means they're adding a computer object on the domain, right? So and then how your um, SSM gonna be discovered those machine. So if you do every day, that means every day if any machines is added, it's gonna be discovered. But the thing is, we are not actually apply the patch every day or every week, right? 
So in that case, you can go with the movie. That's fine. And also you can have options to do the manual discovery. Apply. Yes. And click OK. So now this one is enable. So this one is now enable. And if you right click on it, if you say run forest discovery now, that means immediately. So schedule always is going to be happen every week. But if you want any time, if you want to discover now, so which is the manual discovery, you just simply you can come here, discovery method and right click on whatever the whatever like this one or this one, whatever you want, just right click on it and say run this discovery now. That's the manual discovery. So now we're going to work with Active Directory group and discovery. Properties the same way. Enable Active Directory group or location, go to the location and then name. So this is the Active Directory group discovery. So you can select your entire uh, domain controller and you can have nice name. You can say group like the way we have here. Okay, here. So you can enable and then add at least the groups. And so you can select your, so you can go with a lot of things, a lot of, um, Group, okay. Group, this group discovery. And in here, actually, you can do if you go a specific group. I know in my active directory, there is no other uh, OU, no other OU has the groups. So I have only one container, one parent container, and that parent container has maybe multiple group, multiple uh, sub OU. So the parent group, parent OU, I select. But if you think you have multiple parent group, parent uh, OU, in that case, go for the like top one, like the root one, or maybe select your domain directly. But in my case, I know my all the groups is here under this OU. So select this one. Okay, and everything else you don't need to change, uh, just click OK. And then pulling schedule, schedule is enable data discovery occurs every seven days effective from today or like or from some other, it's a default day. So by default it's gonna be occur, like schedule uh, every, um, at 12 a.m. every seven day it's going to be pulling the data, discover the data based on the groups. And also enable data discovery, delta discovery interval minutes, five minutes. So whatever the default configuration, just leave it like this. And also you can check change here too, like only discover the computer that have logged onto the domain in a given period of time, you can check mark here. And if your company has a policy 60 days, you can just go for 60 days or 70 days or 80 days, whatever you want. So I'm not actually selecting any one of them. It's up to you. And apply. Yes. And okay. So, so far we configured two things. And now Active Directory System Discovery. Right click on it, go to the properties. Enable Active Directory System Discovery. Click on here, the sun icon, like, and then path. So we can follow this instruction for this one. Enable, then click here, you see, LDAP. So your computer object. So what you are going to do, right? Based on this, you can select it. So what we are going to discover, this, this discover method is for the system discovery, that means computer object computer object or any other object. 
So you can simply do the browse and you can leave your domain here like, like this. Like you can do like this or you can do any specific OU. I know in my case, I have all computers in this OU, but, but you know, like I have a domain controller also here and some computers also here. So three main container, three main uh, OU I have, which has already computer objects. In that case, I should go for the domain. So it's gonna cover all under domain. All under domain. And then the second option here, okay. This should be check mark. It's already have a check mark. You don't need to do anything. So click okay. And pulling schedule, it's already enabled. Discovery attributes, you don't need to do anything. Option, you don't need to do anything. But if you want, you can just change this one again. Depends on your company's policy. So apply and yes and okay. Now active directory users directory, right click on it, properties. So it's gonna discover the active directory users. Enable, click here and then browse the path. And again, same thing, you can select your uh, root active directory. Uh, DNS, which is ELS in my case. So I can select this one, or I, if I know, like I have a specific parent OU and which has a multiple sub OU. So which is this one, user accounts. So my all user accounts is there. You see here, I have a, like, I have a sub OUs. I have a sub OUs, right? So this is my parent OU for all the users. So I can select this one. And that's it. Click OK. Pulling schedule, if you want, you can change it. I'm not going to change, I'm leaving everything. Default. And network discovery. So network discovery means you can right click on it, go to the properties. So when are you gonna do the network? discovery if any machine if any machine is not if any machine is not in your active directory it's not joined with active directory it's not joined with your domain and if you want to discover them how are you going to do that so you can go for this with the subnet enable network discovery you can go topology wise, topology and client wise, topology client, show network speed. Okay, anyway, subnet, you can add the subnet here. So whatever the subnet here, say for example, 10.15.90.0. This is one of my subnet. Subnet mask is 255, 255, 255, 255. Oh, sorry, not 255 and 0. You can do this also you can add all your subnet 192.168.1.0 that's also 255 or whatever the subnet you have and zero so i have three subnet here in my lab which i am adding 172.116.80.0 255.255.255 and zero so it means that if I have any computer which is not a domain joint, that also is gonna be discovered. You want to discover resources. If you want, you can add the domain SNMP if you want to add as SNMP. So through the SNMP, DSTP, all those things you can do from here. So, so far we enable all of them. And now, if you go to the asset library, device, you see, I already get some devices here. How I got it? Because through the device collections, you configure, you see all groups. I already found all the groups, all the users, device collections, 
you see how many devices all systems i have total five if i can refresh it maybe i can get more or you can say um So asset, asset and compute compliance is gonna be show you the result. And if you want to configure something, you have to go to the administration and then you have to discover from here. So we already did this, we already done with this, the discovery options. Now they're creating the boundary and boundary group. So we have to understand actually what is the boundary and boundary group. So creating a boundary and boundary groups. Boundary groups as per Microsoft, a boundary is a network location on the intranet, not internet, it's intranet. That can contain one or more devices that you want to manage. That means it gonna, it's a boundary of your local area network, like which is attached with your device and which one you want to manage. Boundaries can be either an IP subnet or Active Directory site name, that means through the IP subnet, you can create a boundary or through your Active Directory site name or IP address range. So let's look at it, look at like how you can do that. So boundaries, right now, nothing here. So right click on it, create a boundary. And now we can have a name of a boundary. So I can say, um, Edit side, whatever you want actually. Edit side boundary. I'm just using this one, but it's up to you. Whatever the description is, this is the Active Directory side boundary, and I'm going with Active Directory side. So if you want, you can go with IP subnet or IPv6 or IP address range or VPN. If up to you to create the boundary, I mean you can have a multiple boundary. You can have multiple kind of boundary. So you can have maybe IP subnet, like three IP subnet with one boundary group, another three IP subnet with another boundary group. So you can have a multiple groups of boundaries. See this, the last one, next one is boundary group. So you can create a boundary group, separate, separate boundary group. So boundary group is a, com is a, a combination of boundaries, is a group of boundaries. So if you have multiple boundaries and you make one group, that's a boundary group. So we are going with the Active Directory site and browse for the site name. Okay, it's, it shows default fast site name. This is our site name, Active Directory site. What does it mean? If you go to the, our Active Directory and go to the uh, server manager, you're gonna see on the tools, you're gonna see here, Active Directory site and services. So when we created our Active Directory that time, it asked us what should be our site name, right? So we didn't change it. We, we just change, we just leave it default. If you want, you can change it here, rename. Default first site name, right? You can say ELS. You can say ELS first site, that's it. So we just change it, right? Refresh, refresh. And if you come back here, cancel it, just go browse. Now it's looking, okay. <coughs> Actually cancel it, do it again, create boundary. AD side because we are going through AD side boundary. If you go for IP sub and you can say IP, uh, IP this range to this range or billion this range to this range, whatever you want. IP side boundary, AD side boundary. So we are going with AD and browse. You see, 
now it's ELS for site. So click this one and boundary groups, add boundary groups. Okay, boundary groups is not there because the boundary group is not available right now because we didn't create the boundary group, right? Apply and okay. Boundary groups, okay, right click on the boundary groups, create a boundary groups, okay. So this one, now we're gonna create a boundary group, right? Okay, so the boundary group, create a boundary group and then you can have a nice name. Site server for all computers. So this is a site server for all computers. So you can have a name here and then add and you see here ELS first site. Click OK. And reference. For the reference, you can have you can add add this one, right? So not SQL actually. This one. Okay. And apply. And okay. So in here now, if you go back to the default site boundaries, okay. So it's up to you, you can create this. Go to the properties of this one. Reference. Okay, so we added this one boundary group and on the boundary, this is the boundary side, go to the properties. And also now if you go to the boundary group, you can see site server for all computers, which is how you created and you can add it like this. So we have boundaries, we have boundary groups. Now, what else we need to do? The next is automate and simplify device management. So from the bottom of the left pan, click administration, okay? And then client settings and default client settings. So we're gonna follow, we're gonna follow these settings step by step. And I'll show you what we need to do. So from the administration, you have to go to the client setting. So client setting, then default client setting. You can create your own client settings, custom one, but we are not going with this because the default one has already everything set it up. So all option is there. You just need to customize it through your settings. So the client settings, okay, background. So you're not doing anything here. Client cache setting. Uh, configure cli a client cache size. You can say yes. And maximum cache size. So one zero. So here is five gigabyte, just make it to 10 gigabyte. So you can say one zero, two, four, zero. That's it, nothing else. Everything will be same. And then cloud settings, okay, client settings, client settings. So client settings is Client policy pulling interval minutes, 60 minutes, every 60 minutes. So you can change it to maybe 10 minutes, every 10 minutes. And the cloud service, we are not doing, uh, okay, actually, basically. Okay, sorry, it's a, sorry, the cloud, this is a cloud service. Cloud service. We're not doing anything. Compliance settings, we are not doing anything with the compliance. Computer, computer agent. So on the computer agent, 
what we gonna do? We're gonna do the install permissions, PowerShell execution policy. Where is the PowerShell execution policy? Here, PowerShell execution policy. For this option, PowerShell execution policy is say bypass. And then computer restart policy. So on the computer restart policy, specify the amount of time after the deadline before a device get restarted minutes 90 minutes is going to provide the service. you don't need to wait that long you can say 15 minutes and then for this one you can say the 10 minutes and then for this one you can say uh, after the deadline specify the frequency of restart remain to the users every how many minutes every five minutes or 10 minutes is up to you and when a deployment requires a restart, show a dialog window to use user instead of a toast notification. So you can say yes. Delivery optimization. So we are not doing anything with this. Input protection, enrollment, hardware inventory. Hardware inventory, what are you going to do? We can change maybe the schedule schedule and run every seven days. Maybe you can change it to every one day. It's up to you. It's not mandatory. You have to do it. It's up to you. Um, power management, remote tools. Okay, remote tools is important one. So remote tools just need to configure and you can say enable and it's you can enable or domain based pri private and public all and then on the remote tools set view and click here and browse assign a group so I think I have a group name RDP or something RDP admin group. So whoever whoever the user is belongs to this group, all those groups will have this permission. Click OK and click OK. So permitted viewers of remote control and remote assistance. Software center. On the software center, you can click yes and then customize. So on the customize window, you can say ls windows patch management or something like that. ls windows patch management. Uncheck this one. Click OK. Now software de deployment and schedule is up to you. You can just leave it like this or you can just come here and you can say uh, one day, every day. And then software inventory. So on the software inventory, the same thing, you can change the schedule from like seven days or maybe you can leave it once uh, you can change it to one day or you can do it seven days is up to you and that's it software metering actually you're not doing anything with the software metering. software metering uh you don't need to do anything by default whatever is software update okay so software update we're going to change something here the schedule and uh, this schedule you can change it to one day same thing this one one day then the other one we're going to enable management of the enable management of the enable enable this one obviously this is a client 
This one you can click on yes for Office 365. Click OK. Oh, sorry, not click OK. We have uh, some other things. User activity, activity rule. So activity rule here, we can change this one to uh, 120 minutes and this one just 10 minutes. And that's all, nothing else I believe. That's all, click okay. So we did our custom settings here. So this part is done now. All right, so now software update points, SUP installation for update deployments to client computers. Software update points. That's very important because the SSM gonna be download the patch through the WSUS and we installed the WSUS role, but we didn't configure it completely, right? So now we're gonna do that. And that's called a software update points, SUP installation for update deployment to the client computers. So we're gonna follow this instruction, software and this is gonna be default and next default, next default, sync from Microsoft update. So what we, are, what we are going to do right now from the administration, site configuration, right? Site configuration and then server and system, uh, site system role. So from administration, then site configuration, then site servers and so if you go to the site, you're gonna see our primary site here, right? So site server and role. So we have this is our primary site server, right? And this is our SQL server. So click on primary site server and add a site system role. And also in the bottom, it shows whatever the system rule is already installed. So it's found automatically everything. If it is not showing, then you can just browse and show the this one. So by default, whatever is showing here is just leave it like that and click next. Click next. And proxy, we don't have proxy. Then click next. Now, which, what we are going to do? Software update points. S U P, right? Check mark on it. Now you're gonna see there is a lot of other options. Click next. And here by default, whatever you have, just click next. And WSS proxy. You don't need to do anything here. So click next. And this is also default one. You don't need anything. Click next. Now the schedule. So enable plus this one. And you can change the day to hours or whatever you want or maybe one, one day, every day. So every week is fine because we are not going to apply the patch every week, right? Or not every day. So we don't need to check every days, right? And click next. In this page, just check on immediate expire surprise software update. There, this one also the same thing. And click next. Third options. Remove absolute updates from the WSS database. Click next. Now the maximum run time. So it's up to you. We just leave it default. And this one is also default. And then classification. So the classification is going to be changed. Update depends on, um, you can change it later on also. So the classification, all uh, critical updates we want, and we want the security updates. And sometimes maybe we need definition updates, nothing else. But um, you, can, you can have uh, options to change it later on and click next. So we are not checking right now all product. We just gonna check only. So all of the options is not updated yet because um, it's gonna take time to sync everything. So for now, just for now, 
I'm just selecting Windows 2016. Nothing else. Click next. And English is fine. Next. Now it's going to give you the summary. Click next. All right. So everything is done. To exit the click close. So you can just close it. Simply close it. All right. So we already installed software update points. And now we need to check the status. So for checking the status, what do you need to do on the um, on the SCCM primary server of primary primary site server? Uh, you need to go to the your like file explorer, then go to the my PC, then C drive, and then go to the program files, then uh, Microsoft Configuration Manager, and then logs. And on the logs, there is something you need to check. So I'll show you what you need to check. Just what you need to check. So before you check this one, you need to, uh, for tracing, you need to have an, one software tools, which is you can get it from the, uh, like the, on the software, like uh, the current branch software. If you go inside of this, Go to the um, MS setup and then go check with tools. Then you're going to see the CM trace. So just co copy this one, CM trace. And I'm going to minimize all those screen. Okay. So I'm going to paste it on my desktop of, uh, on, on the desktop. Which desktop? This is uh, SCCM, primary size server, right? So on the primary size server, I paste it. Uh, CM trace. So you can open it or you can do what? Like um, open the log and then SUP setup, which is software update point setup log, WCM log, and WSUS CTRL log. These three things you can check. What's the status of this? It is working or not working? So sub setup, right? So if you move it and leave it here, it's gonna open, yes. And you can check here what's the status. Installation was successful. So that means software update point setup is successful. You see here, it shows it's successful. Now we can check another log. WCM log. So you can just test it here. You can check this successfully connected to the local WSS server. That means it was able to communicate with the local server. And then you can check. You see, this is the log file from your primary site server from C drive, right? This is the location. If you look at, the, oh, sorry. This is the location. If you make it Expand it, then you're going to see the actual location. Program files, Microsoft, Configuration Manager, and logs. And then, so the reason I'm 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 trying to check all those logs through the tra the, the tracing tools, right? So that's why I open both window side by side, and then it's easy to check. So. I see everything is working. Now I need to check the last one, which is WSS control, this one, right? Successfully control WSS. What is the WCM status? It's connected to the WSS server. So everything looks good. Now you can check a software library and all software updates. So all software update is not showing here. If it is not showing here, that means it wasn't able to sync uh, from the WSS server. And if you look at on the WSS server, there is no sync is running. Or if you can select this one, you're going to see idle sync, uh, synchronization now. The last synchronization happened today at 
2 12 p.m so now is already 28 12 59 a.m and so if you want to synchronize you can synchronize from here but we are not going to synchronize it from the update server we're going to synchronize through what through the SCCA. so software library software updates but it's not showing anything then go to the SRM compliance uh, administration tools. Select the sites and services role, and then select this one. Okay, select site. Actually, site, not site and services. For site and services, we use for configuring the software update points. So software update points already configured. So go to the sites because the update is not showing. And it wasn't able to sync or communicate. It wasn't. It was able to communicate with the WSS, but WSS wasn't able to sync from the Microsoft. So we're gonna send push like we are pushing to WSS to collect the uh, updates from WSS. So synchronization. I'm sorry, uh, from Microsoft. So synchronization. Running the synchronization, we are not. Uh, going through the WSS, we are going through SCCM. So where you need to go, administration, and then site, and then select your primary site. And you're gonna see here, configure site components, click here, and software update points, okay? And go to the synchronous schedule products, okay, go to the, go to the products, and you're gonna see here, it will show you a lot more other uh, operating system, it should be, so in here, I still is not showing any other operating system. It's not showing. It's showing maximum is 2016. 2019 is not there. And 2022 is not there. It's fine. That's fine. It's not an issue. So what else you can do from here? You can select this one. And where's the Windows 10? Even though Windows 10, Windows 11 is not showing. So we, we need to run, it's gonna take time. When you run and synchronize, and then it's gonna be, and SSM setup always take time. So we can have maybe other package, just, just to see. Actually 22 is not gonna be load here. And you can say to a SQL server 2016 product or something like that, apply. Okay, so now you can go back to the asset and library, no, no, software, software library, still is not showing, you can say synchronize update. So when you say synchronize update, run synchronization, you can debut the synchronization process by checking the SMS WSS sync manager component in the component status node monitoring workspace. Side so wide synchronization of software updates, yes. So you click yes, but you are not able to see actually what's going on. So just minimize it and then open the trace and look at the WSS status. Check database collection on WSS server, this one. And also you can look at here. You see here, when I refresh it, it shows synchronization is already start. So this synchronization, I didn't start from my WSS. I did it from where? From SSCM, right? From SSCM, I, I said like sync, synchronization now. So it's now synchronizing and this synchronization will take time. See synchronization is 0% and also if you go to the synchronization option, you wanna see here. start synchronization is running. So it's gonna take a long time, first time when you synchronize it, it's gonna take maybe 24 hours or maybe more than that. The first time it's gonna take a long time. So you have to wait, there is no alternative. You have to just check and if it is fair, if, if you see like if it's running more than 24 hours or one day and then, then you can cancel it, you can reboot both server and restart it again, sync it again, then it's gonna be completed within four, three, four, three or four hours. And you're gonna see the update here. If if it, if it is synchronized, then you're gonna see the update here. So we have to leave it here. There is no choice. So in the meantime, we can look at for other things. 
So again, for software updates, you have to wait. There is no alternatives. All the possible things I already shows. If you look around the devices, you're gonna see all the devices, whatever I have in my environment is already there, right? And client issues, no, 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 there is no client installation, right? So there is two way you can install the client. That's I'm going to show you right now, SSM client installation. So that means if you want to update any other third party, uh, any other um, client server or maybe other workstation, in that case, you have to install the SSM client as end to all other servers. But how you can do that? You can install individually, you can log in each and every server or a, each and every workstation, then manually you can install the client asset. But we are not going to do that because it's too much work. If you have a 500 or 1000 workstation, you have if you have a five uh, like 500 uh, servers, it, it is not possible to do manually. So that's why I'll show you here two possible way. The first one I'm showing through the SSCM console, uh, which is like accuracy wise, it's not 100% accuracy, but I'm going to show you the options, actually how you're gonna do that. So you see here, administration, then you have to go to the site and select this one, client installation and client push. So we're gonna just go there and look at actually what we can do. Okay, so the first possible way I'm showing, but I, I can't rely on it because I'll show you later on how we can um, install the SSM client agent through the GPU. So GPU is more easier. I'll show you step-by-step step all the steps. So the first step is through the SSM console. Select the administration, go to the site, and then select your primary site, right-click on it, then go to the configuration site component, uh, oh, sorry, client uh, installation settings, client push installation, click here. And then from this window, you see here, this is the window, first option, and then this three, and then last one. So first option, which is enable automatic site void, client push installation, and then what are you gonna install? Server, workstation, and configure as a site system servers. Uh, I think last one you don't need, and this one, by default selected. And then account, So you need to verify actually, are you able to communicate with other machines? Are you able to install other machine? So how are you gonna check it? So for example, this is the server. Uh, this is another server name is WSS actually. I'm not meaning it's a WSS. I'm just asking you, okay, for example, uh, SQL server. So this SQL server, like the user you are going to use right now in this box, we use a service account, which is called um, SSM admin, right? So SSM admin, whatever the user you're gonna assign here, that user should be able to install the client remotely, log into the machine, each and every machine on the background. That means the silent installation automatically is gonna go each and every machine. So who, who will go there? Each and every machine, workstation or server, say 5,000 workstation, 2,000 server. So who will go there? Your service account. And that service account must have a RDP local admin access. So I'm going to assign that user here right now. So go, click on browse. That's CCM, AD, MIN, and check it. Okay, and then the password. So this user, this user will try to log in those machine and then try to install the SSM client as well. Okay, so how are you gonna verify it? If you click on verify network share, 
So where the network share, if you have a network path, you can share the network path or you can say any, so uh, say for example, my SQL server, right? My SQL server, this is the SQL server, let's see. So say for example, SQL server, SQL server IP address or maybe the FQDN, ELS.com. Slash then C drive. How we go to C drive, right? I'm just checking C drive if I can access C drive and test the connection. The connection was successfully verified. That means this user was able to access my this server. This server means maybe all other server. You can check maybe WSS at the same way. ELS WSS. Let me check. Uh, ELS, WSS, and then test connection, successful. That means so far I checked two server and success, connection was successful, right? The connection was successfully verified and click OK. So that means this user will be able to install, then install properties, SMS site code equals to EVA, ELS Virginia. So this is my site code. Apply and OK. And now, so that means we just completed this option, right? Accounts, we assigned this one and we test the connections, right? Now click on the asset and compliance. Asset and compliance and then device. So asset and compliance. So now we're gonna, I will show you actually how you're gonna apply it. Asset and compliance, then device, and which device you want. So if you want multiple computer, you can just select like this, press the shift key and then select all of them. Whatever, like how many machine you want at the same time, whatever the machine you want, just press the shift key, hold it, and then right click, select all, like, all of them, like whatever you want. And then say, install client. And then click next. And, and then in this window, allow the client software to be installed on domain controllers. You don't need to do that. You don't need to. If you want to on the install on a domain controller, See, I have a domain controller selection here. Then in that case, you can say, okay, yes. But if it is not a domain controller, don't do that. And always install the client software, uninstall the existing, that's also you should select if any other machine already have previous any W or like client as an install, then it's gonna be uninstall. And then select this one. So click next. And click next and close. So now so on the background now is start working. So how are you gonna check it? Is it working or not? So I applied all of the machine, right? So in that case, say for example, oh SQL server machine, right? SQL machine. So now you're gonna see on the SQL machine. I never install here. So I'm going to minimize this. So when you push through your SCCM, it comes to the client server. Consider this machine as a client server machine. And if you go to the C drive of this client server machine, you're gonna, uh, like if you go to the uh, Windows, then you're gonna see SCCM setup. So SCCM setup actually wasn't there before. It's just come right now. This folder is created right now, you see the time. 117, 116, and here is the log. So if you want to check this log, the same log, how you can check this log? I'm going to actually copy the trace file. This trace file, I need this trace file, okay. Let me copy this one, paste it here. So this trace file you can copy paste in any other server to check the status, so just push it here. Yes. 
Now you can see the status. So this one is installing, it's trying to install. You see register user. So that one is taking a long time, but um, to the GPO policy is more easier and less time. So if you apply to the GPO and you can maybe restart the server and then automatically when server is booted up, server means all client server or workstation, when those workstations and servers are rebooted, at the time, it's going to update with the GPU policy. And GPU policy has all the settings to apply or install the SSM agent. So that's more easier. You see, it's working. So now it's, I push through all servers together. See, I selected all of them and together. That's called an automated installation. That's why it's, it's called. That's why it's called what? SSM. Plan instruction autom automatic automation automatic. It's a, it has like some manual effort, but anyway, you can select multiple machine automatically. You need you don't need to go in each and every machine, log in there and install it. You don't need to do that. That means it's going through the SSM client SSM um, management interface. Does not exist. Could not drive so. Let's see. Soft. Oh, okay, it's already installed. Software center is already installed. You see? It's already installed. Successfully we able to install here. This is a new machine. It's already installed. And also how you can verify if you go to the this is our client server machine. Don't think this is our database. Consider this machine as a client server machine. If you have 2000 machine, out of 2000, this is one of the client server machine. And we install the agent <clears throat> automatically, right? And also there's another process you can verify if you go to the control panel, catalog, uh, sorry, category, small. And then you're gonna see configuration manager. This option wasn't there before. After you install successfully, if you install successfully SSM client agent, in that case, you're going to see this one, Configuration Manager, on the control panel. And you see here, it has all the information. That means it's successfully completed. And if you go to the site, you're going to see the site is there. That means it's successfully installed. And when you see a system setup is exist within return code 0, that means is completed successfully. Don't worry about this all red flag or yellow one. Just look at on the last one. If you see return code is zero, that means it's installed successfully. And so the verification is like you can type SOFT soft from the search. You're going to see the software center. And you open the software center. You see ELS Windows patch management. And everything you are able to see here. So our agent is installed successfully through what? So that's so. One way we already proved that we are able to install, right? The second way, if the first way is failed, the second way is you can deploy through the group policy. So now I'm going to show you group policy. So for group policy, you have to go to the, your Active Directory machine, or maybe if you have a jump machine, you can go there. And here. So group policy object. In here, you have to create, I think I have here software installation. Oh, this is a different one. Sorry. Group policy management. Okay, group policy management. Um, okay, so let me create one. Right click on it, new. You can say deploy system client as in using group policy. 
So I'm going to copy the whole thing <clears throat> and paste it here. You can type it, okay. So deploy SSM client. And if you look at the settings, nothing on the computer configuration and this one, right? So now we're gonna configure it. How you can do that? Right click, go to the edit option. Computer configuration and then policy and right click on administrative templates. Policy, right click on administrative template and then add remove templates. So now you should add, <clears throat> click add. And then in here you need to provide the path. So how you can provide the path? So if you search here, say double slash and provide your primary site server. Sorry, so SSM and double slash with this. Or you can, oh, sorry, you can say are you and run run go to the run option and then double slash this hit enter it will open another window so from that window go to the sms underscore evm that is your site underscore EVA, that means your site, go this folder, and then from there, go to the tools, and then configure management ADM template, this one. Okay, so I have these two, and just copy the whole thing, the, the path, and then Paste this path here. You see here on the edit, edit option, just here. And hit enter. Then you're gonna see two of them here, right? Select all two together. Okay, it's selected. And then close it. Okay, now you can have this option, classic administrative templates. It wasn't there before. It wasn't there, it's just added because you added with this way. So now the next step is, let's expand it. Then you're gonna see, configuration manager, configuration manager client and Double click on it, you can say enable, assign the site. So assign the site, what is your site? Do you know the site code? Your site code is E, V, A, right? And say site assignment retrieval, uh, retry interval is, say for example, five minutes interval. Site assignment retry duration is one hour and apply and okay. So first, this one is done, which is configure, configuration man, uh, manager site assignment. And then the second one is configure configuration manager client deployment settings. So this is pretty like important. If you enable it, you're gonna see the system set up. And in here, I'm going to open this one. Maybe, okay, this one. Okay, so SSM setup exe MP, and this is your uh, management point. Okay, so this, which is our this server, right? Primary side server. I'm just copying this one.
okay and then set code is e v a right that's it just copy the whole thing copy this whole thing and paste it here so if your primary site server name is different name just provide the different name that's it follow the exactly same thing follow this one sccm setup.exe space slash mp equals to your primary site server with uh, you like your fully qualified domain name and then sms site code whatever the site code my site code is now ba that's why i'm using eva and that's it and apply and okay so this part is done now create a new package to deploy the system client as in by the gpu right so for this one this this one is done so we have to do some other part here for the software installation but before we do that we have to do some preparation for the msi file the as in we want to deploy that once we have to have on our share folder so i'm going to create a share folder because we have a uh, i am going to open Another, another window. So on on E drive, you can say SGCM underscore client as in deployment, right? So in, in here we're gonna put our SSM software, but how are you gonna get this software? So run, you see, we have it, SMS EVA, and then bin x32, and then go down, SSM setup. What is the file name? SSM setup.msi. SSM setup.msi, Windows install, this one is MSI. If .msi is not showing, what you can do, go to the view option, it is hiding, that's why. Extension view and you say, uncheck hide extension for known file types, apply, okay. Now you're gonna see the extension, you see MSI. So I need this file. So I'm going to copy this file, okay, I'm done. And I'm coming back to here. Paste it here. Okay, my file is here, right? So now I'm going to share this folder. Go into properties, share, and advanced share, share, permission, everyone as just read. That's it. Click OK, apply, OK. Now you're going to you see, you can have it share path and just copy it copy the share path that's it i'm going to close everything and i'm going back to the dc my gpu so i have the share path you see it says clean the share path I, this is the process that one i just did and now Go to the GPU settings and under computer configuration, expand policy, software settings, right click, software installation, and then click new package like this. And paste the location. Then you're gonna get it. So let's do it. Right click, new package. And then in here, just paste the link, hit enter. Okay, CMSI is there, open, assign, okay. Okay, it's already assigned. You see here, it's assigned. So exactly with this, this process. Now, this part is done. Now we need to do two other settings, which is under the administrative templates, system, logon, and then Always wait for internet is enabled and okay. So let's do it. Administrative templates, system, logon, 
always wait for the network come to start the log uh, start up uh, uh, start up and log on enable apply and okay that's it now the last setting last setting is under the system administrative temporary system and group policy and specify startup policy wait time is 30 30 seconds okay let's do it so we are already there on the system and group policy okay all the way down okay let's check it again where it is it says specify right Specify specify startup policy posting wait time. This one enable and it says 120 seconds. You can say 30 seconds and apply and okay. So we are done with the GPO policy. Now, if you refresh this GPO policy, you're gonna see you're gonna see all the settings here. Your site code you see here. SSM setup, the one you provided here, and EVA, 30 seconds, everything is there. Okay, so now what you need to do, if you want to install the SSM agent, you need to link that GPO on top of all OUs. Then it's gonna be applied to computer object, domain controller, and if you have any other computer object. But if you don't want to apply all of them, then what you can do? You can individually link only here. So it's up to you how you're gonna link it. But in my case, I'm because I want all my domain controller on my like all computers, like all computer means under here. I have endpoint management that means Windows 10 and 11, mobile device, Windows 10 workstation, right? And also I have a server. I have a Texas data center server, I have a Virgin Data Center, and also Texas 2016, 2019. And, and then they have a development and production. So I don't need to individually link each and every sub OU. So what I can do, if I link here on the root label, say link an existing GPO, which one? Deploy SSM tools, click OK. And then refresh it, refresh it. So if you look at my, so now if any one of my server doesn't have or it wasn't able to install SSM tools with the other way, then it's gonna be installed with this way through the GPU. And also you can check the status. If you look, go here, uh, your SSM. And if you go to the asset and library and devices now, you're gonna see some of the device already has now, see? This one has client install, yes. SQL has yes. And some other is not yes yet, but eventually all of them will have this because GPU needs uh, GPU needs time to implement on all servers. So eventually it's gonna be installed, but by default GPU take like um, two hours, actually one hour, 30 minutes plus 30 minutes plus minus. Total two hours needs to be implemented on all servers. If you have a 5,000 server, doesn't matter. It's gonna be installed automatically through the GPU. So, so far we already got two and rest of them, we're gonna get it shortly or maybe it's gonna take time, but we have to wait until everything. So that's all, that's all the um, SSCM installation and configuration settings. The only thing left, which is the only thing is left, which is software library and where all the software should be shown here, but it's not showing because, so it's going for idle mode, optional, okay. Anyway, so from the option, W server configuration wizard, you can check it next, uncheck it. Next, next, next. And up to here, you don't need to do the start connecting. You don't need to because the rest of the part will be done by. You can just simply close. 
So it's cancel. Everything is cancel, but it's not working. So what you can do? Because after I build this one, I didn't restart the server. So what I can do? I can restart the server. Restart the server can do a lot of stuff. So after I build everything, I didn't restart. So restart the server. I'm going to restart it. So the reason I logged into my vCenter, I want to check the status of my primary site server because I just restarted. Okay, it's online. So what I need to do, I just double click on it. I just, and then like, which is like, I'm going to RDP on it again. So the server is opening right now. So almost I'm logged into the server. And then we're gonna do some other process again. So this is a kind of troubleshooting because you're not gonna get everything at the same time. And server reboot can do a lot of stuff. If you have something like logically you were right, but it's not working. In that case, first atom you should do restart. So I have restarted and then now I'm going to open one by one everything. So it's the same configuration manager console and also the WSS. Yes. Okay, this is my SSCM. And you can check also again uh, the SSCM option, WSS configuration user, and click next. Oh, sorry. This one, next, next, next. And close it. So this is, this one is open, but there is no synchronization right now. So you're gonna push it through the SCCM again. The SCCM is opening right now. And SCCM console, like Microsoft Configuration Manager console, takes time to open. Okay, it's open. So what do you need to do? So I'll go to the software library and software update. It's not showing anything. It's not gonna show because nothing downloaded, right? So go to the administrative tools. No, not administrative, asset and compliance, maybe, no. Administrative tools. Site configuration, go to the site, and then select the site, configuration, software update points. Okay, software update points, properties is open. Go to the products. Classification, just security updates and critical updates. And then products, expanded. Don't need this one. Just you can say Windows 10, you see now it's, it's showing more Windows 11 also. You see 2019 is there now. It's gonna be increased. You're gonna see more options here. So 2016 and we don't have Windows 10. Microsoft SQL Server 2014. Okay, anyway, just do one, one. Sync schedule. Actually, every hour, uh, you can say days, one days, and apply. Okay, and now what you can do? Software library. Go to the software updates, and there is nothing. But you can say synchronize update. Okay, software updates, and. Now you can check on your WSS. Okay, so now when I refresh it, it shows it's synchronizing. So you have to wait again. I said like it's gonna take time. So I'll be back when it's done. But 
configuration wise everything is done but only thing is if i want to show you this this option needs to be done then i'll be able to show you actually so for this one you have to wait 24 hours or more than that or more than that this is the process all right so uh, i just open wsus console and it shows the synchronization is 10 percent so it's increased so the only thing is you have to wait because in WSS and SCCM, you cannot get any result. If you after configuration, setting is done, <clears throat> you cannot get a result right away. So what, what you cannot get right away, which is um, SRM compliance. No, not SRM compliance, administ uh, administration. Then site, when you click here, software update process, you have to do it multiple times. You have to go here multiple times and you're gonna see some change is happening. It's, it's working on the background. All the settings is same, nothing changed, but on the product you're gonna see is gonna be changed. You see the first time when we set it up, we didn't see that many things. But right now, if you look at on the windows, it shows Windows 10, Windows 10 different, different version. It wasn't available before. Plus, and I now I have 11. It wasn't before there. Plus, I have 2016 and 2019. I was it wasn't there before. So I now I select 16, 19, um, 11, and 10. So you have to come here multiple times to see the updates, and then apply. Okay, after you're done with this, then go to the software library and software update and then click the synchronization but my synchronization is already started so if you go to the monitor and you can see the synchronization status you see the software update points synchronization status synchronization is running which is started at 218 now it's 228 and and the WSS on the other hand WSS is 10 percent done so it's working. And also you can see here four critical updates, one security updates. So now is the WSL server able to download. So we have to wait. You see now 11% is increased. So it needs to be done 100%. And it will take time maybe again, four hours, six hours, 10 hours, I don't know. So you have to wait. This is the waiting game for uh, WSAS and SSCM download the file from Microsoft. So you have to wait, there's no alternatives. And I'll be back whenever it's done. And I'll show you after it's done. So another thing is you can check for to the tracing tools. You see the, the I'm, I'm right now, I'm in uh, SSCM primary site server and inside the uh, Microsoft Configuration Manager log, and this is the tracing tools, right? So I just traced this one, WS, like W Sync MGR, this one, I just run it like this, and it shows me what's the status, what's the updates. So WSL synchronization categories, it process 592 out of 92 items, 100%. WSL synchronization updates, process four out of this, and ETA will estimate a time 12 hours, 6 hours, 5 hours. You see here, was it, uh, 51. So right now it says estimated time is 6 hour, 5 minutes, 7. It can be changed. So you can check the status here also. All right. So I think our WSUS is updated. Let me check. So it has already synchronized, like two schedules synchronized. So the first one we ran it uh, yesterday, which is uh, not yesterday actually, is 5.28, today is also 5.28. So early morning, which is um, at 5.28 at what time? 
started at 2 18 and completed at 5 29 a.m that means it takes three hours 11 minutes and also after that i ran another one manual so manual synchronization that one also succeed but the first one we uh, when we ran it like on the Eastern night time, that time I said like it's gonna take 24 hours. So in the daytime, I wasn't able to check it. And now it's 5.28 night time, 11.52 PM and AM. So almost 24 hours after 20, almost all after 24 hours, not 24, less than 24 hours I'm checking, but it takes only three hours, 11 minutes to complete the uh, synchronization. So le let me check on the, the SCCM. So if you go to the SCCM software library and all software update, click here, you're gonna see all the updates. But then that time, the time I run the first scanning, like the first synchronization, that time I selected only just 10, 11, 20, 19, and 2016, but I didn't select on 2022 because 2022 didn't show on the list, product list. So after that, what I did, I ran another, uh, so before I ran uh, the second synchronization, I, I did something else, what something else, like on the, on the administration, and select the site, and this is the primary site, and then configuration, software update points. Then the same option, and from the products, all the way go down and select the windows, see here windows. I have selected another four boxes here, but I had before Windows 10, I had before Windows 11, and also I had before Windows uh, 16 and 19, but I didn't have this one. So I added these three. Why I added these three? So Microsoft Server Operating System 21H2, that means this one is renamed, Microsoft renamed uh, Microsoft Windows Server 2022 with this name, Microsoft Server Operating System 2022. So how you can prove that? And not only that, they have a multiple uh, version of 2022. That's why 2021 H2, 2022 H2, 2023 H2, 2024 H2. But you have to think uh, which version you have. If you your organization, using all four versions, then that's fine. You can select all four, but if you 100% confirm your organization is only using this version or only using this version or only using this version, in that case, you can select only this one or you can select multiple. But in my case, I selected multiple. It's not gonna affect anything. It's just gonna download all the paths together uh, when it's synchronized. But how you wanna make sure which version you have? So if I can show you one of my um, so my uh, Active Directory server, I have Active Directory server in 2022. So if you look at on your, sorry, 2022, so how are you gonna verify? So any Windows server, if you don't know what operating system is running on it, you can, on the search bar, you can type W-I-N-V-E-R, WinVer, and then hit enter. It's gonna show you which version. So it's Windows 20 server 22, that's I, we, like we know. But which version? Is version is two, you see here version two one h2. So I'm, now I'm pretty sure I need actually only this one. But anyway, I'm just doing all four to just show you guys. And then I hit OK. And after that, when I hit OK, and after that, I go back to the software library. And then, and then I ran another uh, synchronization software update from here. When I click here, immediately it goes to WSUS and WSUS start synchronize, synchronization, uh, start the synchronization. And it was successful today morning at 11. So it started 10.36 and it's finished at 11.10. So it's, it took about um, uh, how many minutes? 24 plus 10 to 34 minutes. It took about 34 minutes. Now, if you go back to software updates, you're gonna see here. Uh, if you look at, okay, release date, based on the release date, if you scan the, based on the release date. So I added the release date here. It wasn't there before. You can just right click and then check mark on it. Then based on the release date, if you can do like uh, ascending and descending order. 
So you're gonna get all the latest update. So if you look at here, you're gonna see the release from 5.14 because this one is the Microsoft. So from, uh, from this one to up to this one. This one is the Microsoft what? Microsoft. This one is Microsoft. That's Tuesday release for May 2024, 5.14. If you look at here, click the calendar, you see 14 Tuesday. So second Tuesday of the month, which is May 2024, right? So, and here is all, this is the, this, this patch is for Windows 11. This one is for 10, this one is for 10, cumulative update. And if you look at here, Microsoft Server Operating System, it doesn't say anything about 2022, but whenever you see something like this, 23H2, that means it's for 2022. So, and also 23H2, um, 21H2. So for my machine, I need this one. So it doesn't matter if I add a bundle with all, all together and I apply to my machine, my machine only gonna take this patch. It's not gonna take other patch. So there is no issues if you add all together in a bundle for like all 2022, all 2016, or maybe you can say all May for from here to here. So you can select like this. So you can say all server together. Uh, say for example, this one, right? This is for the, no, not this is for the server. This is 11. So this is for the server 2016, right? 2016, then, then this one is for, oh, sorry, 2016 and then this one, this one, and, and don't do ARM, don't do the ARM, only the x64. So this one is for Windows 11 and you don't need to go after five. So just go up. So all the cumulative update. So these three only I found. 2019 and what is the 2016? So okay, 2016 and another one is 20. I'm just looking for 2019 update. 2019, I don't have any 2019. So I have this 2019. So I can select this and I can create. After you select, then you can create your software update group. So this one will go the administration part. So I'm not going to do that right now. I'll show you guys in another video. Uh, because I'm gonna I'm gonna make some small small videos for SSM administration because administration have a lot of parts like uh, regular Windows maintenance. So I'll create a separate video for regular monthly Windows maintenance video. I'll create another video for how you can deploy third party tools, like for example, VMware tools or uh, any kind of security tools, how you're gonna deploy it to all of your servers or workstation. So I'll create a separate video for that. And also I'll create a video for all third party tools or third party application like uh, third party browser, like for example, um, Chrome browser, um, Internet Explorer browser or Mozilla Firefox browser, how you can apply, how, how you can um, install or apply the update for all those browser. So I'll create a separate, separate video for the administration. So, so far we already discussed and we already configure uh, SSCM from beginning to end. So if you, I know this is a long video, it's gonna be three hours or plus minus because I didn't see the duration yet. Um, just think about actually SSM itself is a five to six month course. And I try to implement everything together within one video. And also I have a nice documents, which I will share with you guys. This is the documents I have. I will share with you guys. Uh, and I put it on my description box, um, like, through like maybe I will up upload it to my Google Drive and I'll share the uh, Google Drive a link on my uh, on this video's description box. And hopefully you guys will be enjoyed like 
for this video because if you follow this instruction, you'll be able to uh, implement your own SSU menu at your home lab. So hopefully this video will help you guys. And if you like this video, please give a big thumbs up and don't forget to, uh, like if you're new in my channel, don't forget to subscribe and also uh, make some comments because your comments encourage me to make more videos. Um, thank you and thanks, uh, thanks again. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in another video.